In this video, you're going to learn how to solve trigonometric equations, and specifically, we're going to talk about how to find the general solution. So we're going to go through three examples, see if you can do these on your own, and we'll go through them together. Uh, the first one, we've got 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So when you're solving these trig equations, it's very similar to solving algebraic equations, but you want to get the trig function by itself on one side of the equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to isolate this cosine of x by adding 1 to both sides of the equation. So now we have 2 cosine x equals 1. We're going to divide both sides by 2. And so now you can see that we have cosine of x equals 1 half. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the unit circle and we want to ask ourselves, where is cosine equal to 1 half? Well, remember on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate. And so let's see, where is the x coordinate a half? Well, we can see it's here as well as here. So if I just draw a little sketch over here just to illustrate, here's our unit circle, and you can see cosine's a half right here at pi over 3 or 60 degrees, and over here at 5 pi over 3 or 300 degrees. Now, notice these points here. If we want to write a general solution, what we have to do is we have to say x could equal pi over 3 plus if we add 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi, we're going to be going around that unit circle and we're going to be ending up in the same spot on the unit circle and the value of the cosine is still going to be 1 half. So we're going to say pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, and then you can write where n is an integer, meaning like you can't, n can't be a half or a third. You have to be multiples of 2 pi. You know, it can be positive or negative. You can go either direction around the unit circle. So it can also be 5 pi over 3, plus 2 pi n, again, where n is an integer. So this is our general solution for uh, the answer to this equation. Now we're going to go into a little bit more challenging one in the next example, so let's dive into that one next. Okay, number two, see if you can do this one. We have 4 cosine squared of x minus 3 equals 0. So again, we're trying to isolate that trig function by itself on one side of the equation. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we get 4 cosine squared x is equal to 3. We're going to divide both sides by 4. And now we have cosine squared x equals 3 fourths. But what we're going to want to do is take the square root of both sides to get the cosine by itself. And when we do that, when you take the square root of both sides, you get two answers, positive or negative. Square root of 3, we're going to leave as square root of 3. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. So now what we're doing is we're saying cosine of what angle equals positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. And remember, the cosine is the x coordinate on the unit circle. So you can see it's going to be positive root 3 over 2 here and here, negative root 3 over 2 here and here. So if I just draw a sketch just to kind of illustrate here, you can see we're at these 30 degree angles, these pi over 6 degree reference angles. So you can see it's actually going to be pi over 6 in each of these quadrants, first, second, third, and fourth. But what I want you to notice is that, see how over here at pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, see how they're like diametrically opposed? It's like a diameter, like across from each other. And same thing over here with 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. These ones are diagonally uh, across from each other, diametrically opposed. So when we write our general solution, we can group those together to make it a little bit more compact of an answer. So we have x equals pi over 6, Plus, because we're going halfway around the circle here, that represents 180 degrees or pi radians. So we're going to say plus pi n, where n is an integer. And also, we're going to take this one here, 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 plus pi n, where n is an integer. It can't be a half, a third, etc. So we were able to group these together to make it a little bit more compact. Uh, this would be our general solution. If it just said, you know, find all the solutions between uh, 0 to 2 pi, okay, like this, then you would just say pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. But what we're focusing on here is writing a general solution. Okay, number three, we have a little bit more challenging one. We have cosine x minus secant of x equals 0. How do we solve that one? And by the way, if you like the way that I'm explaining these concepts and you want to go deeper into Algebra 2, uh, definitely check out my Algebra 2 video course for sale. Uh, that goes into all these different concepts plus more uh, covering Algebra 2 uh, topics. But let's uh, jump into this one. Here what we're going to do is we're going to change the secant of x into 1 over cosine of x. Because remember, secant is a reciprocal of cosine, right? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to clear this uh, denominator here by multiplying through by the cosine of x. 
So I'm going to distribute that cosine of x to the left and right sides of the equation, keeping it balanced, right? So this is going to give us cosine squared of x minus 1, okay, because here these are canceling numerator and denominator, and 0 times anything, of course, is 0. So now I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. So this gives us 1 and cosine squared x. And if we take the square root now of both sides to get the cosine by itself, we get plus or minus 1. Because remember, when we take the square root of both sides, we get those two answers, positive or negative. So now we go to the unit circle. Remember, cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. And we say, well, where is the x-coordinate 1 or negative 1? So it's going to be 1 here, and it's going to be negative 1 here. And those are the only two locations. So just to draw a quick sketch, it's going to be here and here. And again, notice that they're uh, across from each other like a di di no, diameter is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, so what we have is we actually have 0 plus, we keep adding pi to get to this point, and another pi to get to this point, etc. So if we keep going halfway around that circle, we're going to end up at one of these points where cosine is positive or negative 1. So you can see that x equals 0 plus pi n, or since 0 is really nothing, we could just say x equals pi n, where n is an integer, and this would be our general solution. If you want to see more examples, follow me over to that video right there where I show you how to solve even more trigonometric uh, functions.